everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another episode in my cheapest seat series. I try and do one of these every month where I pick a show and I book the cheapest seat and obviously let you know how the view is, what the seats are like and if they're worth your money. I've already done about five or six shows in this series so if you'd like to check out what previous shows that I've done in the cheapest seats then there's a playlist on my channel and I'll link it down in the description for you if you want to see what the cheapest seats are like at shows like Wicked and Hamilton and Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, you can find those videos linked down below. I always love hearing what shows you'd like me to cover in this series, so if there's a show that you desperately want me to do the cheapest seat video on, then do leave a comment down below. For this month's video, I wanted to revisit a classic, not only because quite a few people have suggested it, but because it's been a couple of years since I last saw the show, and I thought I was well overdue a visit. So I went to see the iconic Les Miserables. It's been a couple of years since I last saw Les Miserables, which is just crazy, to be honest. And I thought I definitely need to see it again. I've actually been quite lucky to see it in a few different areas of the Queen's Theatre to see Les Miserables. So when I take you through the website for the show, I'll let you know like which areas I've sat in because I've sat in a couple of the restricted view spots as well. So I'll give you my opinions on those and I'll show you obviously where I sat for this show. Full disclosure, even though I'm gonna show you through the official Les Miserables website, I did actually book my ticket on Todaytix for this visit. I did this because I have credit on the app from lovely people using my referral code and I always think it's nice to use that credit that I've earned from other people using my code to make more videos that are hopefully hopefully helpful for you. <laughs> However, just as a side note, it's very rare for Les Miserables to discount their tickets, so I still did buy the ticket full price. And with this series, I don't like to buy discounted tickets because I want to make sure it's fair and that everyone can access the same price that I have paid. I hope that makes sense. Without further ado, let's crack on and I'll show you the website and where the cheap seats are and which one that I sat in for this trip and then we'll go into the vlog section and then I'll come back to you here and we will talk about the view and the cast and what I thought of seeing this iconic show again. Okay, so first of all, we obviously need to go to the Les Miserables website and you'll see in the top right hand corner the book now button. So we're going to click on that. And for now, I'm going to choose the increased availability slot. And I'm probably going to jump forward a little bit because I want to be able to show you all of the seats that are, well, the most seats that are available for a performance, just to give you an idea of where the where the price bands are and where the seats are. With shows like Les Miserables, they don't really use dynamic pricing. So the prices shouldn't change drastically between each performance. The price bands normally stay fixed, which is really good. But sometimes for like peak periods, such as the summer and the Christmas time, the prices might be a bit higher. So here is the map for the Queen's Theatre. And first of all, I'm just gonna show you where I first sat to see Les Miserables. So this was towards the back of the stalls. When I first saw the show, it was a lot cheaper um, back then. But these seats towards the back, you have the dress circle overhang on top of you and it does restrict your view, especially of the barricade scenes. For some people, you won't mind this. You'll prefer being just closer to the stage, but I really didn't love this view. I personally find that when that dress circle overhang is on top of me, it really kind of it pulls me out of the show a little bit. You can see even in some of the top price seats, you still will have that dress circle overhang slightly blocking your viewer points, which is just crazy, but that's just something to note. There are cheaper seats in the stalls, but they're not the best in my opinion. Then let's go up to the upper circle and you can see this is where I sat on this trip to Les Miserables, which you'll see later on in the video. It's really good that the seating plan is like color coded so you can kind of tell where the price bands are, but in the upper circle, it's a bit complicated because where I am right now was my seat with a clear view, but then some of the other green seats will have a slightly restricted view and I'll show you that in a second. So as you can see, the next price band up in the upper circle it does have a slightly restricted view in the middle that's because of a safety rail which I'll show you later on in the video so even though you're sitting in a better price band it's still going to have a slightly restricted view so this is why I think you just need to be really careful and look 
at all of the notes on the seats and they do tell you very nicely like in the light blue ones it'll tell you how bad the restriction is and a lot of the time it'll tell you why it's restricted as well these ones it's obviously because it's being at the side of the upper circle and then you've got the safety rail ones uh, in the middle and also at the front of the upper circle. So as I say, again, you've got those green seats, but they've got the slightly restricted view because of the safety rail at the front of the level. But as you can see, all of the ones that are like in between the middle and the sides, there'll be a nice clear view. So then it just depends on how much you want to spend. But as you can see, there's not gonna be a huge difference between like the last row of blue seats and the first row of green seats in the middle section. So you may as well just go for the green ones. And then you've got the standing room that's uh, mostly towards the back of the upper circle. And I think personally, this would be the best standing room position. I have done the standing room here before and they only sell it when the show is completely sold out. That's something to note um, if you want to go on a weekend maybe and you don't mind standing for like three hours, then that's an option for you. I'll insert the price on screen now because I think they've changed the price recently and I can't remember how much it is. So yes, that is an option for you. As I say, I stood at the back of the upper circle once and I thought it was a pretty decent view. I think there's some standing room towards the back of the other levels as well, but you will have that overhang situation going on. So I don't I don't personally think it would be the best view. And I'm gonna jump into their like best availability now. I'm gonna jump way into the end of the year because I want to show you some seats that are really good in my opinion. So you can see in the front row there, there's two seats in the middle. And as the note tells you, you're directly behind the conductor. I think if you're a fan of the show and fancy splashing out for one or two trips, then this is a fantastic spot to be in. Yes, you are directly behind the conductor, but I found that personally added to the show rather than distracted me because I sometimes love watching the conductor especially when they're so passionate and for a show like this obviously it just added to the experience for me and obviously it was amazing to be so close to everything that was going on and you can see there's quite a price difference between those two middle seats and the ones next to them so I feel like that's quite a bargain yes it is pricey as I say if you're happy to splash out once in a blue moon then that those are amazing seats in my opinion I sat there before and I loved it and I would happily sit there again and I might treat myself to those seats one day in the future, again, because they were great. It's not the interval, it's currently 20 to 4 and we've been evacuated from the theatre. This has never happened. I'm pretty sure I've never been in a show and it's been evacuated. Uh, we don't know what's happened. The Paris scenes have just started and then suddenly an alarm started going off. And then it was just an initial sound alarm and then suddenly it was like, emergency, please exit the, like, exit the building, blah, blah, blah. And then the house lights came up, so everyone left, obviously. And now we're all out on the street. And we don't know what's happening. I'm kind of tempted to sneak around to the stage door side, because obviously all the actors all have had to come out in costume. I hope everything's all right. I'm sure it's just something that's been triggered or something, but it's, uh, it's quite interesting seeing the entirety of the theater just out on the streets next to the theater. Kind of crazy. Hopefully we'll be able to go back in soon. I'd say it's probably been about five minutes. So let's see what happens. This is a new experience. just had a fire engine coming around the corner um, it's not come down by the theatre some uh, some firemen have come down so 
I'm gonna say it's not urgent. I'm gonna say it's all right. And they probably just need to do the, you know, the checks to make sure everything's all right. But yeah, this is quite a, quite a new experience, not gonna lie. Welcome back to the chatty section of the vlog. So as you saw, it was quite a dramatic trip to Les Miserables. I'm pretty sure this is the first time that I've ever been in the theatre and we've had to be evacuated due to a fire alarm. Thankfully, everything was fine. There wasn't a fire. I'm not actually sure what caused it. They obviously didn't tell us, but it was really nice to see such a quick response from obviously all the staff there and also the fire brigade because they obviously had to check that the building was all safe and good and fine and everything was. Thankfully. If this ever happens to you while you're in a theatre, don't be alarmed. Just obviously stay calm, follow the instructions from the staff and everything will be fine. Just as a little PSA. Keep calm and carry on as we Brits say. <laughs> as you saw, I was in the upper circle. So the top level of the Queen's Theatre and I was still quite to the side, but it was still a clear view. Though saying that, there were definitely some like tiny, tiny, tiny moments that I did miss out because of the curve of the front of the upper circle. This is actually the reason why patches of the seats in the upper circle have a restricted view. It's because of the way the level curves at the front. So it cuts off parts of the stage. I've seen the show a couple of times before, so I knew what was going on. I knew what bits that I was missing if I was missing anything. But obviously if it's your first time visiting the show, you probably want a clear view. And I'd say that actually in my seat, I didn't feel like I was missing anything. So I'd say that's a win. I was personally surprised actually at how comfortable the seats were as well. I wasn't expecting them to be as comfy as they were. And especially in terms of the leg room as well. If you watched my Hamilton cheapest seat video, you'll have heard my little rant about Cameron McIntosh and not giving us any leg room. But thankfully in the Queen's Theatre, I couldn't complain about the leg room because I had plenty. It was very nice and comfortable. So five stars there. Obviously being in the upper circle, you are a bit further away from the action, but it's definitely not the worst I felt in a theatre. I could still see everything. I could still even see facial expressions. It really wasn't that bad. Obviously that one will depend on how your eyesight is. But for me personally, I thought it was great actually. Had I been slightly more central, that would have been optimal. But saying that as well, there is a weird safety rail because they have a central aisle going through the upper circle and it cuts off I'd say probably around the fourth or fifth row and they have to have a safety rail there as well. So if you're more towards the center, but further back, you might have that safety rail uh, blocking your view slightly. But if you are right at the front of the upper circle, like second or third row in the middle, that would probably be an amazing view. There were a couple of tiny moments where I missed the action that was happening at the very top of the barricade, but it was literally like, the tops of heads so nothing too crucial and overall I don't feel like it affected my experience and my enjoyment of the show so as I say in terms of the view the comfort and the price I'd say it's pretty good I'm gonna jump into talking about the cast and the show now but if you've sat in the cheaper seats at Les Mis especially in the same area that I was in I would love to know your thoughts on the seat so please do let me know in the comments down below. My main motivation for going to see Les Miserables again aside from doing this video was actually to see Killian Donnelly in the show. He is currently playing the role of Jean Valjean and I've seen him in a couple of shows before. I saw him in Memphis and then Kinky Boots as well and obviously this is a very different role. 
I was really excited when I heard he was taking over the role and it's now coming to the end of his run in the show. He's finishing in June, I believe, and then he is going to be doing the UK tour of Les Miserables, which is very exciting. I knew that I had to see him before he left and I'm so glad that I did because he was absolutely fantastic in this role. Yeah, I'm so glad to have seen him as Jean Valjean. I thought he was just spot on for the role. He had so much power in his voice and his portrayal and he just ticked all of the boxes and obviously because he was cast in the show. It can be very subjective as to who you enjoy watching perform in a show and I just found Killian to be perfect for the role. Someone else I was really intrigued to see in Les Miserables was Carly Stenson who is playing the role of Fontaine. They performed at West End Live last year and I have to admit that I wasn't sold on her portrayal of Fontaine but they'd only just started I think literally that month. I feel like the cast of Les Mis they always have it a bit tough in terms of doing West End Live because they just start and then it's like, okay, now you do this big public performance in Trafalgar Square. So I knew not to judge her too much on that performance because that wasn't going to be her best performance because that she'd only just started. I was really pleasantly surprised by her portrayal of Fontaine. I know that Fontaine's not on stage a lot, but I thought that when she was on stage, she was really good. She has a really nice singing voice and I was intrigued as to whether that would really work with Fontaine, but it did, she sounded really good. And I felt really sorry for her, which is, you know, what, what you want when you're playing Fontaine. You want people to feel sorry for you. So she did that and I'm glad because that's always nice when someone surprises you and you think they might not be good for a role and then it turns out that they are. It's always just nice. I had an understudy for the role of Eponine, which I was slightly sad about because I was really intrigued to see how Karis Jack would play the role of Eponine because I saw her in You're in Town years ago now and I really liked her in that, so I was intrigued. But the role was in safe hands with Alice Ellen Wright, who just nailed it so perfect. I'm pretty sure the last person I saw playing Eponine was Carrie Hope Fletcher, I think. So, you know big shoes to fill in my memory of Les Mis, but she did a stupendous job. I thought that she was like perfectly sassy and fierce. And as well, I felt really bad for her because when the fire alarm went off, it was just after her line when they're in Paris. And I'm just gonna insert a little audio clip of that bit because I don't wanna have to imitate it because I'll look like a fool. But this bit. <laughs> that was when the fire alarm was going off. And bless her, they obviously had to like reset and do that whole bit again. So she had to do that massive like scream again and sounded just as good the second time around. And as well, I really felt for her. I feel like this might not be for everyone, but for me, because I go to the theatre so much, I feel like I remember more that they are like actors and not the characters. So when a performer can do such a good job that I am completely I'm like, you're Eponine and I'm really sad for you. And why is this happening to you? I feel like when they can do that, that's a pretty amazing thing. So I had a great time watching her. And you know, as much as it would have been nice to see Karis in the role, I am just thrilled to have been able to see Alice and her amazing portrayal. So I don't feel like I missed out. Uh, I felt very satisfied with how she played the role. What I find amazing about Les Miserables, and I know that people have differing opinions on this, but for me personally, I feel like it never feels old. I think that's a really wonderful thing about a production because you get some long running shows or even like some revivals of some shows and you just feel like they need to be spruced up a little bit. And I don't feel that with Les Miserables. I still feel that power, especially in One Day More. Oh my God, goosebumps every time. I still feel that and that's, that's great and I'm so glad. Saying that though, I am really hoping that I can get to see the tour of Les Miserables because I'm pretty sure they'll be doing it the way that they did it on Broadway a few years ago and I managed to see that Broadway production and I equally loved the way they did that. Don't get me wrong, I love a revolve and it was really weird to see Les Miserables without a revolve but I just thought the way they did that was so fascinating so Fingers crossed, I'll be able to get some tickets for the tour to see it because they're selling like hotcakes. If anyone has a spare ticket and wants to hook me up, 
let me know. <laughs> anyway, it was so great to see this show again. I can't believe it's been two years since I last saw it. That is just madness. If you've been to see Les Miserables recently or if you have booked tickets for the UK tour, I would love to know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more of me in the future. I make lots of theatre videos, so if you like that, then you should follow. I hope you're all doing really well and I will see you in my next video. Bye!